Hey guys, we are Sean and Chrissy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we're telling you about the worst tire problem we have ever had in all of our years of RV travel. And I'm calling it the worst because this was a trip killer. Yep, it did kill the trip. <laughs> trip killer. Wasn't that a rap song in the 90s? <laughs> Our story begins in Northern California when we were visiting Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. We had originally gone to Vinny's with several different items on our repair punch list. The number one item was our propane heat furnace. A big ticket repair item we really needed fixed for the winter. It was making a lovely screeching sound. Basically our propane heat furnace sounded like a banshee and blew cold air. <laughs> And I mean, we use the propane furnace really in most of our travels because we're in the West, in the mountains in September, October, and it gets pretty darn cold there at night. So we were at Vinny's and we had our trailer in the shop and we were kind of going through the list of all of these items that needed repair with the propane furnace at the top of our list when Vinny came up to me and said, you know, we really should probably replace these tires your tires, although the tread may look okay, they're about six years old. I really recommend that you replace them at this age. You think yeah. since you check them every day, they're probably I checked okay. them this morning, they were fine. Did you? All right. So I usually get up. Go. So let's defer the maintenance, Clayson, because Sean is religious about checking tire pressures and wheel torque. Every morning with my morning coffee, I go out, check yeah, tire pressures. see his nose growing as he's saying this, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I was thinking maybe we could squeeze a little more life out of them. We were hoping to basically make it home and replace them over the winter when we were home and stationary. Now, if there are any of you out there who have never postponed maintenance because of your budget, then judge us now. Yeah. Judge me. Us. Judge me. You. And just to, to give a little backstory on this. Cue the violin music. <laughs> We'd already had our truck problem on this particular trip that we paid for, which was an expensive repair. The Fickham. We had a Fickham failure in Kentucky. <laughs> so we'd already paid for that. This particular season of travel, we weren't doing much boondocking because of the locations we were visiting. So we're spending, you know, more money, you know, paying for campgrounds. And then, of course, with this season, we were also buying tickets to these football games, which even when you buy the cheapest ticket is oftentimes not cheap. So our budget was already a little stretched this year. Basically, we had to make a decision. Do we want our heat furnace repaired or do we want four new tires on the trailer? And, you know, the heat furnace is an item that not everybody could fix. Yeah. I mean, that's something you want to have a Vinny fix. Yeah. More so for us because we were replacing such an old furnace. So the puzzle here is the new furnace is a little bit larger than the old furnace. It is. It's not the exact dimensions. So I think we have to go a little, little higher on this flange here. So we're going to try to squeeze it in and also reuse our existing eight. cover. So it required sort of finagling it into place. So we needed Vinny's expertise to do the furnace. You know, Michelin recommends that uh, the lifespan of a Michelin tire can extend up to 10 years. And that says it on their website. Says it on the official company website. You can, in theory, get 10 years of life out of a Michelin tire. At this point, we were six years into that life cycle. Michelin specifically says that after the five-year mark, you should begin, you know, examining the tires on an ongoing basis and considering whether they are due for replacement. Well, we decided to roll the dice and get home on our tires. So we were basically counting on these tires to last for 2,000 more miles to get us from California back to the southeast. So basically, we needed them to last three more weeks to get us home, and that would be that. Well, you can see where this story <laughs> is going. After we rolled out of Vinny's shop, we headed through Southern California. And we actually stopped one night in the Palm Springs area and camped at a casino. Didn't gamble at the casino, no. but we did gamble that day. We weren't gambling <laughs> at the slot machines. We were gambling on our tires. Yes. We went, spent the night at the casino, got up the next day, did some work in the camper, had lunch, hit the road probably around, I don't know, 1230 or so. 
We literally are driving for maybe 20 minutes. And somebody's like driving up next to us, waving, pointing. A passing motorist waved at us and alerted us to the problem. What about our tire pressure monitoring system, you may ask? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> we have been using uh, the Tire Minder tire pressure monitoring system, which overall is a very good system, but we've been relying on one of these rechargeable LED screens in the cab of our truck, which we would just keep really sitting on the center console of our truck, and we would pick up periodically to check uh, our tire pressures. And on this particular day, this little device had a dead battery. So we did not have an active tire pressure monitoring system at the time, which simply makes the point with a tire pressure monitoring system, you've got more to maintain with the system. You've got batteries on each individual sensor. And so with our rig, that would be eight individual batteries on each sensor. And you also have a battery or power supply that you need to su supply for your readout, you know, in the cabin, whatever you're using. Now I will point out that TireMinder actually makes a smaller display that is more designed to be permanently attached somewhere on the dashboard of your vehicle. And I think this probably makes more sense for ongoing use. But in any event, we were alerted to the tire problem quickly. Uh, the, the rig was still handling just fine. I didn't really feel the problem, but we did find out about it quite quickly. And we immediately pulled over. The next exit. Next exit on the side of the highway. And we went outside to inspect the problem. You know, my first reaction when we saw the tire was, well, poop. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we lost this gamble. It was a bad idea. That may not have been the exact word he used <laughs> at the time. but It was a bad idea to try and get the most life out of these tires. We should have changed them at Vinny's. All right. Just had quite a dramatic event. We were towing on Interstate 10 headed towards Quartzsite, Arizona. We're still in California at the moment. And guy honked his horn, the motion that we had some kind of problem with the trailer. I couldn't really feel a problem at the time, but one of our older LT tires finally gave out and the tires were due for replacement. We should have replaced them last week. We didn't, it's my fault. We've had a lot of big ticket maintenance expenses this year, not just with our Airstream, but with other properties and vehicles that we own. And we just were going to try and squeeze a little more life out of our tires. And that was a bad choice, bad decision. And our tread still looked good. It was just the age of yeah, the tires. I mean, they, were getting, they were a little over six years old. We're thankful that it happened where it did. We were able to pull off the interstate pretty quickly onto a shoulder uh, at an exit ramp and inspect the tire. Uh, the tire apparently did not do any damage that we can see uh, to the wheel well. There was no flap. Yeah, it didn't flap. It didn't totally disintegrate the way some other trailer tires have done for us. I mean, you can uh, you can see the steel belts visible, but they did not apparently do any damage that we can see. So we're fortunate in that. And so what we did, since we have a twin axle trailer, we can tow our trailer on three tires uh, for short distances. for short distances at uh, reduced speeds so what we are going to do is limp to the next tire facility and, it, uh, and it, uh, it's, it's a lesson it's a lesson you know it's like what we knew we should have done it a week ago and we didn't just a lesson to be learned for us all and frankly in looking at the damage I breathe the sigh of relief. Absolutely. Same. Because we caught the tire blowout quickly enough that the tire had not completely fallen apart. It really had not done any discernible damage to the wheel well or to our trailer. And understand that in these situations, it's quite common for RVs to be heavily damaged mm -hmm. by blown tires. Because what happens is as the tire falls apart, those flapping slabs of steel belted radial will tear up the side of a travel trailer. They could really tear plumbing out of the trailer. They could do thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars of damage to the trailer. Yeah. In this case, we had no damage whatsoever. Yeah, and actually the, the tire was still all connected to the rim. 
you know, we could roll it. To me, that gave me a lot of peace of mind that it had not done any damage. Now, we do have roadside assistance, and we could have called our roadside assistance. But frankly, I'm quite comfortable removing the wheel from our trailer. I didn't want to sit around and wait for roadside assistance. Yeah. So we decided just to go ahead and do it ourselves. We carry a trailer ramp that we use anytime we're having to lift the trailer to do any kind of work underneath, and especially to remove a tire. And if you learn nothing else from this video, if you have a twin axle trailer, stop whatever you're doing right now. Make sure you own one of these ramps. And yes, yes we will provide a link beneath this video to one of these trailer ramps that will lift your trailer safely, quickly, easily, and allow you to you know, change a tire or service a tire, whatever you need to do. Yeah, without having to worry about getting a jack out or any of that kind of stuff. And to me, it's a lot safer too, because it's not going to fall on you. Like, a, I mean, you know, a jack can potentially give out, whereas this trailer, you know, ramp, you pull up on it and there's no falling off of it. So we pulled our trailer up onto the ramp. I removed the bad tire and we drove on three wheels, three tires to the nearest tire shop that had the tires that we needed. Yeah. And you should know if you have a twin axle trailer, you can actually travel for short, reasonable distances at reasonable speeds yeah. on three wheels. Yeah, so we were already on an exit ramp, you know, so that was one reason why we felt safe removing the tire ourselves because we weren't near like fast moving traffic. And we were already at the, the exit, so we didn't have to travel on the interstate with only three tires. So we were already on a side road that we just turned off and sort of took little back roads to get to the, you know, tire shop, which was about a mile and a half, maybe two miles yeah. away. So it wasn't very far. So at this point, I'm of course saying, screw the budget. We're getting four new tires immediately like we should have done at Vinnie's. We go to the nearest tire shop that had our tires and the shop was in America's Tire. America's Tire and Discount Tire are owned, I believe, by the same parent company. This is a national tire chain. And at this time, I'm thinking, we're in the clear. We just right. dodged Woo. a big bullet here. Thank goodness we're going to get four new tires on the trailer and we're going to have smooth sailing all the way home. Now, what happened next? And how did this become our worst tire problem ever? Yeah. Well, there is a term called jaculation, which refers to the act of jacking up an RV or travel trailer. Really, you should never trust another man with ejaculating your trailer. <laughs> you know, we emphasize to these guys up front, this is an RV, it's a travel trailer, it's an Airstream with rubber torsion axles, so you cannot jack up the trailer using the axles. Right. Please do not jack on the axle. That was our biggest fear. Because if Airstreams are jacked by the axles, it can actually bend the axle, which, you know, involves very expensive repairs. Mm -hmm. We also emphasize there are vulnerable components underneath the trailer. So you need to jack the trailer on the frame at the specific jack points. Yes, that are labeled underneath the trailer if you get under there and look at them, <laughs> which obviously they did not do that. The guys jacked up the trailer, and honestly, at the time, I'm thinking to myself, I really hope these guys know what they're doing. I mean, they are professionals. And, you know, when you're in that situation, you've had a hard day. And you're also <laughs> trying to not tell somebody how to do their job, but also politely telling them how to do their job. We were very insistent on there are jack points underneath. You need to make sure you jack it on those points. <laughs> So, we are now equipped with four new Michelin Agilis LT tires, and we should be set for the next six years. Not seven years, six years, max. 
We get our trailer back from these guys. We've got four new tires on it. I'm feeling great about life. And we decided we would just spend the night in Palm Springs and depart the next morning headed eastbound. Yeah, because by this point, it was probably evening by the time they got the tires on. So sun had set. I went inside our trailer to, I guess, wash my hands or whatever. And when I turned on our water pump and went to our faucet to wash my hands, I noticed a strange sound coming from the water pump and the water pressure was suspiciously low. When I went to flush the toilet, I noticed the same phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, poop. <laughs> I mean, uh, it looks to me like... They jack it up on the water pump. Oh no. They jacked it up on the water tank. Oh no. Went outside and I noticed a little puddle of water collecting beneath our trailer, which is not a good look. <laughs> you know? <laughs> when people see water pouring out of an RV in a parking lot, it raises some questions. <laughs> Unfortunately, every time we turn on our water pump, this happens, and clean, fresh water spills out the bottom of our trailer, which is not a good look. We know it's clean water, other people may not, but that's what we're dealing with at the moment. So here's what happens inside the trailer when you turn on the water pump. Water pump's on, let's look at our water pressure. So that's full flow right there. Meanwhile, outside, water is gushing onto the ground. And as you might imagine, this drains your freshwater reserves quickly. <laughs> so here's how it looks in the bathroom. You know, so you cannot obviously shower with this type of water pressure. We can do basic flushing and get just tiny drips of water out inside the trailer. Meanwhile, the reserve water is just gushing out onto the ground beneath the trailer. Anytime our water pump was turned on, anytime water was flowing through the pipes to get to the faucets or to the shower or to the toilet, a lot of that water was just gushing out the bottom of our trailer. Mm -hmm. What had happened, the guys at the tire shop had crushed some of the pipe fittings beneath our trailer by jacking the trailer at inappropriate points. Yeah, they basically jacked up on the water tank housing. We could not take showers no. at all. And it was not really clear how to repair the problem because the pipes that had been damaged were apparently crushed and or knocked loose beneath the belly pan under our trailer. And it wasn't something that certainly I could easily fix. And since we were living in the trailer at the time, we weren't really sure what to do. It's not like we're going to drop our trailer off at a repair place. That would have meant moving into a hotel or something like that. Or we could have called a mobile RV repair guy and maybe he could have fixed it or maybe not. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So it ended up being kind of a trip killer because if you'll recall, we were on this college town tour. We ended up just punting to use a football term, <laughs> and going home. Because yeah. I was like, I'm done with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm frustrated. I just want to get home for now. And we'd already been out on the road for a few months at that point. And this was not the first problem we had encountered on this trip. So we sort of reached our max limit, I think, of problem solving on the road. I'm so glad we'd stayed at that campground that night because we discovered the problem there rather than in another town. So we discovered the problem there. We were able to tow our trailer over to the tire place the next morning, show them what had happened. They were very apologetic. They were very nice about it. We basically filled out some paperwork. They took responsibility for it and they said, you know, our claims department will be contacting you. Don't worry. Discount Tire is a national chain, and you might expect me to throw them under the bus because of this problem. But in fact, I give them a lot of credit mm -hmm. because they took responsibility and they handled the problem. You know, they agreed to compensate us for the repair costs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of companies would fight you on that. Yeah. And I think, you know, they have 
a nationwide insurance policy. Mm -hmm. So I ended up actually with a pretty good impression of the entire company, Discount Tire, because they take responsibility if a mistake happens that causes damage to your vehicle. So to conclude, what are some of the lessons that we can learn from this experience? First of all, age matters when it comes to your tires. You know, at the time when we were faced with a decision, do we fix our heat furnace or get four new tires? Uh, my gut was telling me we should swap those tires. But also, I really wanted to get that furnace repaired because it's the type of job that only Vinny can do. Yeah. And there are a lot of places around the country, in theory, that could replace your tires. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably without damaging your vehicle. But obviously, I wish we'd had Vinny do this job. Now, that man knows how to ejaculate a trailer, let me tell you. This is not the first time our trailer has been damaged by someone who meant well, but simply wasn't familiar with working on RVs. The second lesson that we learned, tire pressure monitoring system only works. If everything's charged, which how many things do you have to think about charging? I know probably for the average traveler, you have a couple of things you worry about charging. Your cell phone, maybe your laptop, your headphones, whatever. We have probably 10 cameras that we are constantly charging, changing batteries on, all those sorts of things. So, you know, something gets lost in the mix sometimes. And sometimes it's a drone battery and sometimes it's your tire minder battery. And this time it was the tire minder battery and, you know, it is what it is. But in this case, that wasn't really a deciding factor in the damage. You know, mm -hmm. obviously the damage happened at the tire shop. The third lesson I learned is to insist that the tire guys use the trailer ramp when lifting the trailer. You know, you have to really be assertive in these situations and be a little bit of a jerk of a customer and insist on that. Yeah. And I know that, you know, there are going to be some tire guys who, who may not like that, mm -hmm. but you've just got to say this, this trailer simply cannot be lifted through ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> I will add a fourth lesson. Take photos. Because we took photos right as the, the blowout had happened when we were on the side of that exit ramp, when we removed the tire, we had taken photos. So it was very clear in those photos that our water tank was not damaged at that point. So we had proof that we could show the tire shop, hey, after the blowout happened, this is what this looked like. And you can obviously see that this dent is not there that is now there after having the tires replaced. So I think that was helpful for us as well in showing that, you know, it happened while you guys were jacking it. And we also had some video and photos of them in the process of jacking everything. And we weren't close enough to notice at that point in time where they were jacking it. But if you zoom in on the photo, you can see. So those I think were helpful in showing them that this did happen at the shop. Finally, I want to briefly address the issue of LT or light truck versus ST or special trailer tires. Mm -hmm. These were LT light truck tires. I still strongly believe that LT tires are the better choice for a travel trailer. And if you look at, for example, the Airstream company on their top of the line classic travel trailers, they are equipped with LT tires. I think these are a better tire but no tire lasts forever. So we now have our trailer equipped with four brand new tires that were minted in the 38th week of the year 2023. But we will be paying close attention to the date stamp on these tires over the course of the next few years. Thus concludes our cautionary tale. You know, it's really not easy to share these types of stories publicly because this was not exactly a highlight of our RV adventures. Yeah. However, lessons were learned and sure. I have a feeling we are probably not the only people in America who have ever postponed an optional maintenance item due to budget. I have a feeling we're not the only ones. In fact, I think probably every single person at one point in life has made a similar decision. Yeah. In this case, that decision cost us and it really cost us our trip because our trip was cut short. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're thankful it wasn't worse. Yes, very thankful that it wasn't worse. And you know, one final lesson I learned in this whole experience was how long I can go without a shower. 
because <laughs> I don't think I've ever gone longer in my adult life with no shower. Yeah, you're probably right because we showered at the Palm Springs campground. They had a very nice bathhouse. And then from there, we were just limping home. So we were staying at a lot of like Harvest Host locations and some truck stop kind of places, that sort of thing. Boondocking. So, boondocking. I think I'll add that to my resume. Traveled across the country with no shower. I just smelled like manly old spice. Mm. Sexy as ever. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thus concludes yet another exciting episode of Long, Long Honeymoon, the long, longest running RV show on the interwebs, or so we claim. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. Join Loloho Nation. Until next time, I'm Sean. I'm Christy. Reminding you to get out there. Loloho. <laughs>